And with all, Lord, thank you for bringing us to your house today. Thank you for the blessings you've given us this week. Lord, we lift up those that are on our hearts, the prayer request and uh, all the many different concerns we have in the world today. Just uh, thank you for letting us know that you're there and that you've sent your word to bring us encouragement and closeness to you. Uh, go with us now in this time of offering and bless the give and giver. And may be used to lift up lifting of your kingdom. And all these things we ask today in your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 2020, she got um, total uh, something total atrophy um, syndrome. So her, all her muscles were she couldn't use her muscles. It was awful. It was awful. It was a terrible disease. So um, I want to do one of her songs today. You showed me Jesus, and Steve Steve was kind enough to learn it. <laughs> some way to repay the debt I owe and can you hear me when I say how much it means to me to know Love you 
Bibles, turn to chapter 4 of John's Gospel. I didn't ask if there were any visitors here today because I didn't see anybody that I thought was a visitor. I thank everybody here, even though I may not know everybody. There is no visitors here other than people that are visiting and don't want to already remember, right? <laughs> That's all. Alright. And they'll get mad at me and they'll come back now. Well, no, they're not that kind of people. I know that. That's right. Well, we've been having this discussion. She has the, the bad Samaritan, and we're going to make her a good Samaritan before I get through today, I promise you. Yeah. Just like that song, did you say? It makes you feel good, doesn't it? Yeah. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna see her in a different light. But she started out with this discussion. You remember when she started out talking to Jesus? What did she say? You, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for water, a drink of water? And then uh, she's going to call him, she calls him sir, I think, at the end of last week, she called him sir. But now we look at it today, she's going to call him a prophet. She's going to say, sir, a prophet. She's changing her attitude. He has witnessed to her in the perfect way, the way Jesus does. He, he knows how to deal with every one of us, doesn't he? So I want you to look at your Bible, look at verses 15 through 30, or 16 through 30. I'll read 15 because I want to pray out what she said in 15. But look at verse 15, chapter 4. The woman said to him, Jesus, Sir, 
Give me this water so I'll not be thirsty nor come all the way here to draw. And he said to her, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, you have correctly said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands. And the one whom you now have is not your husband. This you have said truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you people say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, an hour is coming when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But an hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming. He who is called Christ. When that one comes, he will declare all things to us. And Jesus said to her, I who speak to you and he. At this point, his disciples came and they were amazed that he had been speaking with a woman. Yet no one said, what do you seek? Or why do you speak with her? So the woman left her water pot, went into the city, and said to the men, Come see a man who told me all the things that I have done. This is not the Christ, is it? They went out of the city and were coming to him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your precious word. We thank you for this great wonderful illustration that I hope will help someone in this room this morning maybe that does not know you or someone who's been away from you maybe as a Christian to get convicted you do that as only you can do through the power of the Holy Spirit in this room this morning we pray you'll speak to us through your word that you'll show us what we need to see and that we will all have a worship experience this morning as we worship you, I hope, in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Jesus. We pray all this in your precious name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> She's facing the truth here in verses 15 through 20. The question or statement in verse 16 got her attention. You know, a lot of times, folks, God will do whatever he has to do to get your attention. He might speak to you in some still small way. He might speak to you on the radio if you're listening to a program or something. You may see someone and remind you of something. But God has all, has all kinds of ways to show a person that they have a need. This woman's need was she was living in adultery. And so she needed to face up to the fact that she was a person who needed a Savior because she was a sinner. You know, the hardest thing to get people to see is that they're a sinner. Do you find yourself that way? I mean, after I decided to start going to church, Patsy and I did, uh, we'd go to this church, that church. I didn't hear anything that bothered me until I went to this one church, uh, the one where I heard the Word of God in a way I'd never heard it before. And I got convicted that I was a sinner. And God revealed that to me. God showed me that my situation where I had that accident was just to get my attention because he tried every way in the world to get my attention and he couldn't get it. Some people don't want to admit that they need a Savior. If you can't admit you need help, you can't get any help. You know that? That's our problem today. That's the problem of this world today. And boy, we are living in a world of sinners. And all of us are sinners saved by grace. I heard a preacher one time say, I don't say that you're a sinner saved. Well, that's what you are. He can say you don't say that you don't want to, but that's what we all are. Everybody in this room is a sinner because you came into this world as a sinner. You had the nature to sin, and you still have that nature, by the way. You carry that around with you everywhere you go. And once in a while, what happens? 
what happens is we get shook up and it comes out of us, doesn't it? I've told the illustration here before, but I'll tell it again because I'm reminded of it right now. I hope it's the Holy Spirit doing these things. Sometimes I don't know. It may be Donnie's spirit, you know. <laughs> but I think this is. I was in a church in Titusville, Florida, and the pastor named Peter Lord, one of my favorite preachers at that time, he called the lady to come up to the front of his church, and he had a glass of water. He gave it to her. He said, now I want you to shake that water. She said, well, if I shake it, it's going to go all over the carpet. Real nice church. This was a big church. He said, I, I told you, you shake it. I'll take responsibility for that. So she shook it. And she said, and she didn't shake it much. She didn't want to fall out. He said, I don't mean you really shake that glass of water. He did her a glass full. And boy, when she did, water went everywhere. And he said, lady, that's exactly what happens to you when you get shook up. When you get shook up, what is in you comes out of you. Amen. And my other favorite illustration is an old lady, and I don't know why I'm thinking of this one, but back when I was a plumber in hot summertime, I was on Broad Street, coming down Broad Street, had to stop at a stoplight, no air conditioning in cars in those days, and, and this was a long time ago, and this lady who was a member of our church, the church where I was saved in, she'd never seen me in my overalls and all that, she didn't know who I was, and man, she got mad at this guy in front of her, didn't pull off when he off to, she was mad in her 70s, and she come out with some words that I was surprised to hear. And then she looked over at me and I winked at her. You know, she realized there's Donnie Friendly over there. And she, she stayed away from me at church after that. I couldn't get her to come close to me. Uh, folks, listen, when you get shook up, that's what happens. And, and, and if you don't get saved, that happens a lot in your life, doesn't it? But once you get saved, you know, you don't need that stuff anymore. You have Jesus inside of you. Well, that's what this woman has got to see. She's got to, she's got to realize that there's nobody righteous, no not one. All of us have sinned. So now the discussion is going to get serious. She's still not there, but she wants to talk about worship. Isn't that amazing that people want to discuss religious things with you? You tell them you're a pastor. I used to do this one barbershop and they'd say, the pastor's here now, everybody clean up your act. <laughs> I'd say, well, don't clean up for me. You've got to answer to him. You don't have to answer to me. I can't help you or hurt you, really. <laughs> but that's what they would do. They, people always want to get religious with you. And that's what she is. And so Jesus is saying, you want living water? Then first you must admit what is keeping you from it, and that's sin. I don't know what yours is this morning. I don't know what yours was when you got saved. But something always keeps people from coming to Christ. Her sin was adultery. She knew it, but had not admitted that what she was doing was wrong. And so now she takes a detour. She gets religious with him. And her argument, where to worship? Now, that's a, that's a big, that was a big argument then because they had these two places of worship. They, the Samaritans worshipped on this mountain. They had a temple there. And then the Jews worshipped down in Jerusalem. The Jews hated them. They hated the Jews. And so they wouldn't marry. So she wanted to, where was she supposed to worship? Now, today, it's, it's uh, a lot of different things, you know. What, a lot of people say, I, I don't want to go to that church because there's hypocrites down there. Now, I have an answer for all those people who say that, and I give it to you. I'm not going to charge you for this. <laughs> Just ask them this question if somebody ever tells you that. You want to go to church with a few hypocrites or go to hell with all of them? Because the hypocrites are after. Hey, if you're acting in here this morning and nothing's ever really happened in your heart of hearts, you can smile at me all you want when you go out the door. But Jesus knows what's in your heart, folks. Do you know that? He knows. Hey, did, did you notice that he knew all about this woman? He's never met this woman before, personally. She knows that. She's never seen him before. He knows that she's got five husbands, or had five husbands. And she, he knows that the one she's living with right now is not her husband. He knows that. You think if he knows that about her, he'd know everything about you and I? He knows everything. Now, if you're thinking bad thoughts about me right now, he knows that. <laughs> I know you're not, but you know, there's more two of you. But see, she's trying to take a detour. And then there's people say, I don't like the music. I don't like the preacher. I don't like the preacher either, to tell you the truth. I wish he'd get better. 
<laughs> but uh, don't like the, some people don't like the music. I remember a guy I had in the church. He came to me and said, Pastor, I'm not going to go over here anymore. I said, Why? Well, uh, the church I, I want to go to has a bowling team, and y'all don't have a bowling team. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm telling you the truth. People think sometimes I make stuff up. I am not making that up. Hey, I didn't go. I, I showed him the door. Wait, what's the first? They're not serious. You've got to be serious to want, want Christ in your life. Hey, listen. This woman finally is now going to get serious. So Jesus starts to talk with her. He shares a lot of things with her, and I want you to see what he shares with her. He shares, first of all, in verse 21. Look at verse 21. Uh, he, he shares with her a word about the future. He said to a woman, Believe me, an hour is coming when neither in the mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. That's a word about the future woman. It's not going to make any difference what the music was like in the church. It's not going to make any difference whether there's hypocrites in the church or not. What's going to make a difference is whether you have your heart right with God. If your heart's right with God this morning, you're going to hear what God wants you to hear. Where she worked, worship was not the question. Both, as a matter of fact, in a few years, both of the temples would be destroyed. Her temple in, in that of Mount Gerasim and the temple in Jerusalem. When I thought about that, I thought, and I mentioned one of the churches this morning, Park Avenue Baptist Church was where that happened with that uh, guy, associate pastor coming down the aisle there and talking to everybody with his shirt tail hanging out. Hmm. One of the biggest churches in Nashville. Had a huge bus ministry. I was a member of there after I came back from seminary. Before I went to seminary, I was a member of Two Rivers Baptist Church. Neither church is there today. Two Rivers Baptist Church, a large, one of the largest churches in Nashville at that time. And for year, many years, is now the home of the Catholic Diocese of, of Middle Tennessee. <laughs> they bought all that property right across from Opry Land. We used to have services there on Sunday night that you couldn't get a seat if you didn't get there early. That's how, that's how great that church was. But that church is gone. Not even, it doesn't even exist anymore. And neither does Park Avenue. See, what happens is, the future God has it laid out. I'm so glad Fosterville is still a church because I wouldn't have anybody work on by now when they run me off at Barfield. <laughs> All of us Barfieldians, we didn't have we had to have some place to go, did we really? And, and so we, we we're glad you're still here. But here's the question for this woman. She needs to understand what false worship is. See, false worship is when we choose what to know about God. Has that happened today? Are people choosing what they want to know about God? People say, I'm not going to change my behavior. God just has to change. Or we'll have to eliminate that from his word. You know, I once wanted to take a Bible and have some false pages in it and read certain scriptures and say, do you believe that? Did just tear it out? If you don't believe, let's just throw that away. I wanted to do that one time just for an illustration. I never did get around to it. God never did give me a freedom to it. That's, that's, that's part of false worship. False worship is ignorant worship. It's just ignorant. And what Jesus is trying to tell her is, and trying to tell me, and trying to tell you this morning, is that true worship is when we see God is spirit. Don't put God in your little box. Don't try to make God see things the way you see them. Uh, don't confine him to your life and your little world. God is big. Hey, we pray on Wednesday nights for people. It's a whole big list almost every Wednesday night, like, like it is on Sunday school. And, and if God couldn't answer, he wouldn't be a big God. But he's a big God. You can ask him anything. You know what's wonderful about God? If we would just understand that he wants to have a relationship with us, we could talk to him all the time. I was in my car down and listened to a message about prayer. And, you know, where Paul says pray without ceasing. You can do that all the time. You know what? We have the ability and the opportunity to go into the Holy of Holies where the high priest can only go once a year and have a conversation with God 
any time we want to. If you get tired of hearing me this morning, just start talking to God. And listen to what he has to say to you because he's there. He's never on a trip. He's never gone anywhere. He's always available. He's there. And that's what true worship is. So uh, Jesus says to her, look what Jesus says to this woman. He gets pretty serious with him, doesn't he? He says in verse 22, you worship what you worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. Now he's talking to first he talks to a word about the future. What's going to happen? Then he talks to a word about faith. Faith comes through the Jewish people. We ought to love the Jews because the Jews gave us the Bible. The Jews gave us Jesus. Jesus was a Jew. We, we ought to always love the Jews. I, it's bothering me now during this election. You have people taking sides against the Jews and against Israel. Hey, Israel's not right yet, but they, we ought to love Israel because God says we're supposed to. I heard Charles Stanley say that in the message this morning. But but it started, he started with the Jews. And then if you think about it, us, we the Gentiles, we're just grafted in. We're only here for a short time. It's going to be over one of these days. We're going to get taken out of here, the whole church of Jew and Gentile. There's going to be seven years of tribulation on this earth. Then there's going to be a thousand years of peace. Jesus is going to come back and take over completely and then there's one last battle and then we'll be off into turkey forever well folks listen we have a lot to look forward to he talks to her about faith he talks to her about the future and then notice he gives her a word from the father he started with the Jews look at verse he start, talks about the father being a spirit now she's almost there She's almost there. She's got one last little question to give to Jesus. Look at verses 25 and 26. She said to him, after he says, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. She says to him, now this is good. I know that Messiah is coming. He is called Christ. When that one comes, he will declare all things to us. Now Jesus had has not been playing tricks on this lady. He's just been trying to get her to understand she's a sinner. She needs a Savior. And he's the man going to tell her something really important. I am he. I who speak to you am he. Oh, I wish I could save somebody. I can't save anybody. I, 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 I talked to my nephew one time. He was going out the door of my brother's house down in Florida. And he, he's not, not saved. He says he doesn't believe in God. And I said, Jeff, I, I, I love you, and I, I, want, I, I want you to be in heaven with me. And that, he didn't argue with me that day. We had some discussions while I was there, but he didn't that day, at least. That's the way I feel about people. I don't want people to go to hell. I want people to go to heaven. She left her water closet. <laughs> she left her water closet. I was thinking about this when I was thinking about an opportunity I had to witness out in Texas when I was in seminary. I was training a guy in evangelism explosion while I was in seminary. I was training another seminary student, younger guy. And we knocked on this door, and this guy came to the door, and he was uh, worked on power lines. And they had visited the church, I think, a few weeks prior. And, and I said, uh, we'll come because you visited. And he said, man, I'm glad you came today, tonight. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, I almost got electrocuted today on a power line. Uh, 10,000 volts go through those power lines, I guess. Maybe it's more than that. And uh, so I began to tell him about Jesus. But here's what happened. His wife comes in. She stops the discussion. We don't have time for that. We got other things we got to do. And we had to leave. Ask us to leave. And uh, he was ready to, I mean, he was ready. I thought about that this, I, I don't know what came with me this week, but I thought about, that happened to me two or three times. Where you're speaking to someone and someone else comes up and just stops the conversation. Hey, listen. If you don't know and you want to know, please 
see me. I'll make an appointment with you. I'll come see you. I'll do whatever. But if you need to talk about your relationship with Christ, I just want you to know for sure. Jesus wants this woman to know for sure. And boy, look what happens. Oh, she left her water pot. You know what? The water pot's not needed, is it? She's found the living water. Some people say, well, she left it for Jesus because he didn't have a water pot. I think she just left it because Jesus closed the deal right there. Because notice what happens next. She goes back to town. Of course, the disciples come and we'll take, pick them up next time. But, but uh, she, she goes and it, notice what it says. It says uh, she went into the city, verse 28, and who she see? The men. I don't know whether it was her five husbands, ex-husbands, or and her boyfriend. I don't know who it was. But she could only talk to men. The women probably wouldn't even talk to her. And praise God. And she says, come see a man who told me all the things that I have done. This is not the Christ, is it? And they went out of the city and were coming to him. Folks, listen. The fact that she witnessed to others tells me that she had Christ in her heart. If you have Jesus and you talk to the most educated person in the world who might tell you they know the Bible front and back, if they don't know Jesus, you know more than they do. And she went out and told those men, you don't ever hear anything about her again. I hope we run into her in glory, don't you? She's the good Samaritan now. She's gone out there and told all those men that there's a man who told me all the things that I have done. That's what happened to me. Did that happen to you? Honestly, ask yourself that this morning. I'm not asking if you're a member of this church, if you've been baptized. I'm asking you, do you know for sure that Jesus Christ is your Savior and your Lord? Maybe there's somebody here this morning you like to have some of that living water. You don't have to go to the well anymore when you trust Jesus. Just admit you're a thief, a sinner. Now think about it. Jesus told her, I am he. I do speak to you. And, he, and she, she went out and told them. And they all came back out. Admit you're a sinner. Jesus is going to be calling you this morning. He might be telling you this morning. Somebody could be a church member even. Come home. Just come home. That's what we're going to sing this morning. We're going to sing, come home. Because that's what everybody has to do. Come home. Jesus is tender to call you. Oh, simple. Come home. Stand with got saved. I believe she got saved because she went out and told all those people, especially the men, particularly the men, to come and see someone. That's all we need to do this morning. Just some of us just make a, a commitment to Jesus that we'll bring people here to this fellowship so they can hear about Jesus. Tell us Make a commitment this morning, many of us ought to, to be that kind of a Christian. And if there's just one person here this morning, it's just like this woman at the well. She just came out to get water because she was thirsty. And she had a divine appointment with you, Jesus. And oh, there might be somebody here today that has a, it's just in that same boat. I pray today might be the day that they trust you as their Savior and Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for anything and everything you might do. In your name I pray. Amen. <coughs> Turn to 482. Jesus is tenderly calling.